We're here with Jerry Swift, who is head of the Women's Business Development Center. It started in Center City in 1995, and now, all these years later, still thriving, helping young upstart businesses as well as larger businesses grow. Tell me a little bit about what you do. So the Women's Business Development Center fosters the development and retention of businesses. We help new businesses start and existing businesses grow. We provide a wide range of programs from short and long-term business development training to finance, individualized counseling, and we also, through our Women's Business Enterprise Council, certify businesses to do business with the Fortune 500 corporations and the government agencies. So we are the third party certifier now for the city of Philadelphia, sure. the state of Pennsylvania, the federal government through their Women Don't Small Business Program and for the corporations. Jerry's company has some pretty impressive statistics of the number of businesses they've helped and women in particular. Tell me a few of those. Monica, at the Women's Business Development Center, we help over 2,000 women each year through our entrepreneurial training programs, financing and counseling. At the Women's Business Enterprise Council in 2014, we have certified 800 women who employ 28,000 and contribute seven billion to the regional economy. That's incredible. It is. Good for you, wow. What percentage of local businesses are women owned and is that percentage growing? Are they getting a foothold? Well, according to the latest uh, small business study that was done in Pennsylvania, um, there are about 288,000 uh, women-owned businesses. In Philadelphia, there's about 155,000. And it looks as if um, the stats are about 40% of the women of the businesses in Pennsylvania are women-owned. Okay, 40%. And is that percentage increasing? Does it seem to be that there's a groundswell in this area? It has been increasing since there was a 40% increase of women-owned businesses between, in general, be, between 1997 and 2012 and uh, the women business owners are growing at a, a rate of one and a half Terrific. times. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that they face? You said you help them with finances and getting some ideas and connecting with these Fortune 500 companies, but what else do they face? Are there small challenges just thinking of the idea or taking a, a basic idea and sort of honing it into something that's marketable? Startup business owners have a tendency to you know, want to be superwomen and to do everything and they need to understand that they sh have to invest in advice. They need to be able to ask for help and that they don't know everything, that there's no one that knows everything. And so sometimes we have a tendency to just work in our business and work and work and work hard and then all of a sudden we realize that we're not getting where we want to be instead of working on our business. And the key thing to making that happen is to write a business plan. So it's work smart, just, not just work hard. Yes, okay. it's work smart, not just work hard. And to really make sure that your business idea is a viable idea and to test that idea. Hmm. And we, and like the uh, small business development centers around the state and other resource partners, provide those types of training for women, training programs and counseling for women entrepreneurs um, to understand, is this business a viable idea? Um, sometimes we get caught up in the passion of our idea and how wonderful it is and and we just, you know, are, are basking in that, that we've come up with this idea that's a great idea. But the most important thing that women need to understand and all entrepreneurs need to understand is money. Because that's why you're in business, you know, to make money. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to understand all the aspects of money and the financial aspects of a business. You also need to be able to understand and know and be able to identify the profile of your customers. Because if you don't have customers, you don't have a business. So I'll ask some startup entrepreneurs, like, what, tell me about your customers. You know, what's their age range? You know, what do they buy? Where are they located? Where are you going to be located? And a lot of times when they're just starting up, they're so caught up in that passion that they haven't even thought about that. And so if you don't really know who your customers are, you know, you don't have a business. I've spoken to some businesses over the years, you know, they already have an office, they have letterhead, they have this, they have that, but they can't answer the question for me as who their customers are. And so it's, it's really critical to um, get the education of learning how to run a business. You might be the best hairdresser, you might be the best engineer, you, you might be the best electrician or construction management person. But if you don't know how to run and operate a business and what those key aspects are, you're not going to be successful. So that's the challenge to take the time to do that. And what percentage of women-owned businesses fail? 
Well, the failure rate, and I don't really have that, Monica, specifically for women, but they say the failure rate of small businesses is 30% in the first two years and 50% after the fifth year. Hmm. They just hit a plateau and they don't really move and grow beyond that? Yes, basically it's a plateau, but then also I, 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 my, I personally believe it has to do with not having a business plan. So not only do you need a startup business plan, but as your business changes and evolves, you need to be able to incorporate a, bit, a plan for growth and strategic planning. And if you don't have those skills, you need to find those skills and you need to be able to implement them in your business if you want to be successful. You can't just do the business. You have to work on the business as well as do the business. So short range and long range yes. thinking. Mm -hmm. So how do people actually finance their businesses then? Well, it's interesting because women business owners tend to finance their business through using their own money initially. Their money, their family's money, and then they will go in to um, seek funding from a, a bank, a financial institution, and um, so for startup funds. So some of the other avenues for uh, funding are venture capital. There are all different kinds of new uh, types of financing that are coming up out on the internet, you know, social capital, and and things of that nature, which are, which are interesting too. But I think most people start with their own money and that's one of the things that women have a tendency in finance to do is to use their own money, put their money back into the business and you know they've been in business for many years and then when they go to access capital, they don't have the collateral there that they need from a financing perspective to gain access to the capital that they need. So my advice to them would be to go seek. Like when I started my business, and I went and sought a line of credit immediately. And I won't tell you what I had to go through in 1985, Monica, to get it, but I did get it. And it, it was important that I had it there in case I needed it. And that was a lesson I learned that was really important. You know, you don't wait until you need it, you get it before you need it. Are women good managers and good owners? What qualities do they bring to the table that makes them good or not good? Well, women actually, you know, have, um, some really great competencies in relation to uh, planning, prioritizing, multitasking. And they also have some leadership uh, competencies in relation to um, being more socially oriented and more empathetic towards businesses, being good listeners, and that gives them the ability to be good managers. So they don't just gloss over an issue or say it'll go away, they're actually listening and trying to solve it. Right. Okay. What are the other typical missteps that people make? Not having a business plan, not thinking outside uh, the box, not looking long term, but also not asking for help. Those are four big ones. Are there any other typical pitfalls? Sometimes when individuals um, start a business with other people, they don't really take the time to really analyze if that business partner is a fit for them. It could be a friend or a family member who's helped you and you say, okay, I'm going to make you a partner. You have to really make sure you get the advice and really look at that because partnerships will fail if you don't have the same value system. And so what advice would you give to women who um, are starting out? Should they come to a center? Is it a paid service that you offer, by the way? Some of our services are free and some of them um, are paid, but there's financial aid and assistance for everyone who can't pay. We've never turned anyone away from our center. Hmm. Well, the Pennsylvania Conference for Women is coming up. You're a part of that, a big part of it. And uh, tell us what you'll be offering to people at that uh, day seminar. Well, I'm really pleased to be able to be a part of the Pennsylvania Conference for Women. I'm a member of the advisory committee, and our nonprofit has exhibited at the Pennsylvania Conference for Women since its inception in 2004. So uh, what we are going to be doing is um, I am going to be leading a business roundtable on business development in the Career Pavilion. Uh, the Pennsylvania Conference for Women is an excellent opportunity for women to come to gain tools and skills for their own pe personal and professional development. And uh, there will be plenty of networking opportunities to enhance that and really make it happen. Mm. All right, terrific. We're looking forward to that. Jerry Swift, thank, thank you. you so much for your time. Thank you.